This is the GPL Podcast, part of the Pull Tab Sports family. You know, a yes. good recruiting tip is like, where, where can I get a good drink around here? The kids. Eat, eat that Todd. Eat that Todd. <laughs> eat that Schloss. Eat that Drew. You know, it was good to see that the Big Ten Network recognizes how to cover hockey. Last year. Mm. The over under for this game, it's seven. Over. Which is a, which is a big <laughs> number. Hammer. Here's the hammer. Hammer. Yes. Over. <laughs> hammer the over. <laughs> Now, here's Jupiter and Vigo. Good evening from Sioux Falls. Um, not a good ending to the season this week, uh, weekend or tonight, Vigs. 6-3 lost Boston University. Um, two empty net goals. It was uh, obviously the game was closer than 6-3. Some goofiness maybe a little light goals on close but i think it's a game they could have won if they just would have gotten that little extra play kind of like moscow was saying when he was sitting right here a little while ago we just needed that one play it just didn't quite happen kind of was that storybook start for them with jackson nelson (laughs) getting a goal birthday boy yes yeah it's birthday you know, a two nothing game. Even though I didn't think they played great the first five ten minutes, you know, I thought BU put a lot of pressure on Minnesota, and I was wondering what kind of game we were going to see from them. Mm-hmm. And I felt like for Minnesota to win this game, they were going to have to play that tight style mm-hmm. where they possess the puck, they shut down the opponent's rush game, and they just play sharp and get out of their zone cleanly. And BU was too talented for that Mm -hmm. tonight. And, you know, closer's probably going to want two of those goals back, the first one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's one of those tough plays where he's trying to read it and it kind of came in on a changeup to him and it just slipped through. And then he had the other one do the same thing. So tough for him to Uh, go out. I'll have to go back and watch because when I'm shooting, it's, it's tough to really see all the things that happened during the game. Um, a kind of a surprise, not a single penalty called during the game. I thought both teams got away with it quite a few times. Um, in the past, we've always seen so many calls in the NCAA regional games. I mean, a lot of calls. To yeah. have none? We had an ECAC crew tonight, I believe. And, and they're, they're usually notorious, they're notorious for calling yes. a really tight game. And I noticed a couple times the officials were – skating by the players and talking to them. Okay. And I think they were giving some warnings rather than penalties. And I know we talked about how Minnesota didn't want to go on the kill tonight, mm-hmm. but I think they would have liked to add a few power play chances mm-hmm. as well. And so to see the entire game basically be five on five was a challenge for Minnesota. You know, even a four on four maybe would have been good for them. Uh, Boston did a great job collapsing their net, blocking shots, especially in the third period. I think BU had 15 blocks the third there minnesota definitely had their opportunities though i remember i see that almost wide open net that oliver moore had and he just he, he he fanned it he missed it but he had a whole net i even got a photo of it i'm like oh my gosh there was a lot of net open there and little things like that pucks bouncing just not going the right way that's puck luck too but uh you know you're in the locker room after it's always so tough going in there after this kind of loss because, you know, you've got some guys that are five-year guys um, that their career just ended. Maybe some have an opportunity to play on further, but really their goal for career just ended after five years playing with this team. Yeah, you can really see it. Talk to Brodzinski, Nevers, uh, Nelson. You just see every guy in that locker room going up to Jackson and just mm-hmm. – you know, paying their respects and dues to him because he put this team on his back the oh, last boy, 11 games. I think he's got 12 goals in the last 12 games. You know, it's his birthday day. And you, you he's know, in his hometown, at, essentially. We talked about that the last couple of months. We said in order for this team to be successful, that line has to be successful. And they were. Maybe some other lines were not so successful. <laughs> I, I think we were expecting a little bit more from Jimmy Snuggerud down the stretch and, and Pitlick, I would say as well. And Pitlick and Pitlick didn't play the first 
eight, nine minutes of the third period tonight. Really? And I just think his decision making mm-hmm. frustrated the coaches. Okay. And we've talked all season about how he will throw pucks south or he will throw pucks to space where there yeah. aren't players. You know, he thinks there should be something there. It's not. It's kind of like that phantom. I know he had a backhand go up from the net from along the boards. I'm like, there was nobody yeah. even close. So, so kind of a frustrating end of the season for yes. Suggerud and Pitlick. We'll we'll see what happens you know, with Suggerud. I I've had a few people tell me he might come back or St. Louis might want him to come back. I've heard this from multiple people. That would be great because honestly, like we've said. The Don used to say, I will drive you into the airport when you're ready. The Don or Bob would not want to drive him to the airport right now because the way he played at the end of the season, maybe not quite ready. I think his dad would like him to come back and play that, another season. Mm-hmm. I think Doug Armstrong would like him to sign and get in the Blues organization quickly. Mm-hmm. It's tough decision. You know, if he goes now, he's probably going to go up and down between the AHL and the NHL, a mm-hmm. lot like Casey Middlestat did. Yeah. And it's just a tougher road. So as it a is. player, you have to decide, you know, do you want the development and college schedule that you get at Minnesota? Or are you thinking you're just going to dump in, jump into the deep end and play pro hockey where it's totally different. You know, if you're not playing well, you know, he's a first round pick, mm-hmm. so he gets the longer leash. He would. But it, it could be some AHL seasoning. I see Twin Cities Hockey there says, Mick Letty said on the radio, he might come back. Well, we'll totally take him back. I mean, uh, I just just asked him after the game about his timeline, and Jimmy, of course, said, you know, not, I, d- I don't even know. Nothing. Yeah. I mean, you don't do that in emotional loss. I mean, you're not going to say anything. Yeah. And maybe Jess is just trying to hopefully get a, a cover, cover his bases. <laughs> And the list. <laughs> so we, we were just given the stat sheet right before we actually the home video was coming on. Um, obviously, no power plays for either team. Uh, Minnesota was up two to nothing. BU at three straight. Hugland ties it. And then, you know, they take that late lead in the end of the second, two empty net goals in the third. Anything on here jump out to you? I mean, it's 18 block shots that were credited to BU. Um, Cade Weber was one of the better defensive players for BU tonight okay. as they collapsed. It was tough for the Gophers to find shooting lanes. You know, I think Luke Middlestad had a real strong game for Minnesota. I thought when he was engaged at the blue line out there with Kester, that's when Minnesota seemed to put their most pressure together. Okay. You know, it's kind of a learning experience for Sam Renzel this week to, to figure out how to impact the game from the blue line. I thought he was pretty cautious. Cal Thomas as well, pretty cautious from the blue line and how they played. Uh, Ryan Chesley, same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's difficult. Mason Nevers talked last game about how you have to hold pucks. You have to hold pucks, and then your player teammates have to support you with their details. And I don't know how well they did that tonight. I see faceoffs 50 50, so that's not so bad. I see Mr. Nelson was 65.2%. Ooh, Oliver Knorr, kind of a rough night. He only he took like nine faceoffs, only won one. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty rough. The rest of them were, you know, right up, you know, Huglin was 50 50, Clark was 50 50. Um, Oliver Moore came in with a lot of hubbub. He played well at, at times. Um, I was kind of hoping we'd see a little more and maybe some kind of playoff push, but it wasn't really anything there, at least that I could see, but (laughs) you see a lot more than I do. I thought he made a lot of productive plays tonight. I thought on his line, he was one of the players that was driving the pressure on top of the four check. I felt like he just needed a little bit more support out there. I did notice his speed out there a little bit because it was one thing I'm like, well, boy, he's faster than you would see BU back up quite a bit mm-hmm. when he had the puck. And actually, I I noticed their defense backing up to Nelson a lot. I mean, they see this big freight train coming at them, and he's been scoring a lot. Mm-hmm. They were kind of giving him a little space. Yeah, I think BU definitely was collapsing a lot more and letting the play happen in front of them. Mm-hmm. And that was a little bit of their strategy tonight. And it, and it was effective. Uh, Minnesota just needed a few more bounces to go their way. And maybe one less bounce go against them tonight. Yes. 
so two empty net goals by BU. Um, like you said, you thought closer maybe could have wanted a couple goals back. What else stands out for you for this game? I mean, that the crowd was pretty good. Um, I, the ice wasn't the greatest, but both teams played on it. Yeah. You saw a lot of bouncing pucks. It's just still a shame what the NCAA does for all of these regions, requiring scraping down. They say your ice is too thick. I heard this from somebody, a staff member. They come in and say, your ice is too thick. You need to do it. And you've got these kids. These kids are going to be NHLers, a lot of them, um, having to play on this type of ice. It's, it's kind of sad. You know, even we talked about Omaha. They lost the game the other night because of bad ice. Yeah. It went against them. The kid fell. If you have campus sites, I don't think you'll have that problem. So another reason. Well, yeah, that would be that would be beneficial because then you don't have to scroll. Well, you, they'd probably still make them put down some kind of logo. Scrape yeah, but, something. You know, they're, they've got the ice ready to go. I just think this year's team, you know, especially the seniors, you know, they've been to four regional finals in a row. So, you know, this team has kind of a high floor mm -hmm. right now. I, I just never saw the the growth here down the stretch to allow yeah. them to be successful and make a run. It just didn't feel like it was coming together. Mm -hmm. You know, they played a great game against Omaha and they got the bounces that they needed. You know, could have very easily gone the other could way. Very easily on yes. Thursday mm -hmm. uh, tonight. You know, they they did get some goals, but they gave away a couple too. So uh, Denver advanced over Cornell. They're in the Frozen Four. They're going to play this BU team. What do you think of that matchup? I think which Denver team is going to show up as well because they snuck by today. Um, their number one offense has not showed up yet. I think it will show up against BU. You I, think so? Okay. I think the way BU played Minnesota tonight, there's there's plays available for you to make yes. with that kind of space and guys who want to go on offense. There's going to be scoring chances. I think it'll be a very entertaining game for the Frozen Four. I, I picked Denver to win the tournament. I think David okay. Carl has got the right team, and they squeaked by in their regional. Mm -hmm. you know, they had two tough games that they had to grit out, and I think that kind of shows their character. They've just got that higher end that's there to compete with a team like BU. What do you think about BC and Quinnipiac tomorrow? BC looks really good. They do. <laughs> I mean, they look, <laughs> they look really good. Like They were clear the number one seed by some margin. I would expect them to get through. I, I don't know if I liked Quinnipiac in their game against Wisconsin. Didn't impress me a ton. I think BC will will have some space there. And yeah, the Badgers just kind of fell apart. Yeah, tough. Uh, Todd was, for, Todd, they were maybe yeah. I listened to Todd on one in his post game. Like, you know, they started out the season nine and one and had a great record, but then the end of the season they're like seven, eight, and it, it was basically sub five hundred the last month and a half for the Badgers. The transfer portal will be interesting for these teams <laughs> yes, coming up, especially be. Wisconsin. You know, they've sat a lot of their drafted players down the stretch they and have taken like away that. their ice time. Well, the, you know, those players, if they want to get a chance, they might just have to go somewhere else. So we'll probably see a lot of movement in the portal. I think Minnesota is looking for some players this year. Mm -hmm. They could use some experience. Uh, when I was talking to Sarah Torrey about recruiting teams, for my article for us show, one of the things is you, you can't usually buy experience at the supermarket. Well, now you kind of can, <laughs> can in yeah. the transfer portal. And I think Minnesota could use a little bit more of that in their program. You know, the impact that Nevers and Nelson and Brodzinski and Closer had on this group is significant, but I think they need some more of that going forward. And then finally, we're going to have at least one Big Ten team in the Frozen Four in St. Paul. We've got Michigan State and Michigan playing tomorrow as well. Uh, every time we kind of pick against Michigan State, they keep pulling it out. I know. it's It's been a heck of a run for Sparty. Michigan looks determined, though. I, okay. They've got they've got a little bit more high-end talent, and they're playing great the last month. They're really and that's where push. I think they're, the Michigan State goaltending could throw that off a little bit. Because Augustine's played great this year. Yeah, he has. He's, been, he's had a good year. He's played in a lot of big games. I, I think that's a toss-up. I just think a rivalry. It's for sure a toss-up. Oh. So we don't want Michigan to win another title. That would be tough for I mean, Michigan State wins hockey. one about every 20 years. So they're yeah. getting close. What about uh, Denver? Can we take Denver winning another one too? Well, then they would equal Michigan with 10 titles. So it would be interesting. Either way, you know, it's going to be blue bloods. 
I mean, Denver's a blue blood. Yes. The EU is a blue blood. Jim wants to be on the show, apparently. <laughs> Jim Rosevold is uh, taking a photo. See, we're in the main media room here. They just took down all the signage behind us. So um, so we're not going to have a show next week. We're not going to do a Frozen Four show. We'll do a wrap-up show um, after the Frozen Four, the Wednesday after. So we'll be back then. We were going to do a show like at the Frozen Four or something like that. But now we'll just try to get credentialed and go down and see it anyway if we can. What else you got here? I think Minnesota's in a good spot as a program. Mm -hmm. I think this loss is frustrating for a lot of the fans based on the way my X feed Twitter feed looks. Oh yeah. I saw, tonight. I saw a fire Moscow and people like, Oh, that's what you get for cheering for Michigan yesterday. I'm like, well, who do you cheer when it's Michigan, North Dakota? And I even said, we all needed a shower after cheering for Michigan because it just felt icky. I like what they have coming in their recruiting class. I think that's a good model for success at Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tonight's going to sting. I think it's a missed opportunity a little bit, but that's the way it goes sometimes in hockey. It is. And, you know, so we'll wrap it up here and uh, wrap up the season in a couple weeks on the GPL podcast. Of course, thank you, everybody, for listening in. Um, you know, just enjoy tomorrow. Enjoy tomorrow. Should be Happy some good Easter. hockey games. Have a good Easter. Yes. And I'll uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Later, gang.